summer sewing inspiration video and then these big long sleeves i love these sleeves they remind me of like sort of like pirate wench sleeves <laughs> this is a thrifted fabric i have been really inspired for years by little women atelier Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is so lovely to have you guys here. Hello, especially to all of the new faces. Lots of new people have joined us recently. So hi, welcome. It's so great to have you here. My name is Rachel. I am a knitter and a sewist and a gardener. And I sort of have like a little mini homestead. Um, and this is my channel where I share everything to do with living a handmade, homegrown and slow life. Hey, so today's video is going to be a really fun one. It is a summer sewing inspiration video. So I'm going to go through all the different things that have given me inspiration for all of my summer sewing. Right now, it is a really miserable, wet, rainy, horrible day here in the Cotswolds, so it does not feel very summery. But um, hopefully, these lovely, this all this lovely summer inspiration will bring the sun back out. <laughs> we did just have a really, really lovely, gorgeous sunny bank holiday weekend uh, where my husband and I got to go out quite a lot on some nice walks and we went to a food festival and things so we have had some good weather and I have been wearing some of my summer makes from previous years um, but I am really excited to get sewing this year I have so many ideas I've seen so many things on Instagram and on Pinterest um, and I think I'll just sort of start there actually um, a lot of people ask me I get asked this question all the time where do you find your inspiration for sewing because um, I think for a lot of people it can be quite hard to you know like come up with ideas and stuff and I definitely find that I don't just like magically wake up with ideas for sewing <laughs> um, I spend quite a lot of time on Instagram and I'm very very inspired by other makers other sewists um, I follow a lot of different people who make the most beautiful and amazing things so that's one of the first places that I find inspiration but I also find a lot of inspiration from other content creators who don't sew their own clothes but who have beautiful fashion sense so for example Charlotte Jacqueline is one of my apps absolute favourites. I love what she wears. She wears a lot of Liberty prints and a lot of floral prints, um, sort of Indian block print dresses and things like that, which I think are absolutely stunning. Um, I also like people um, like you're going to see later on in the video actually like Sonda Floor and Little Women Atelier and Cezanne and different brands like that who I will follow on Instagram um, and get inspiration. I will also check out their websites and have a little look at their new collections to get inspiration. Um, I also find as well obviously other content creators on YouTube, people like Rosary Apparel and Lauren Johnson have the most stunning style. I absolutely love it. It's lots of pretty dresses just like me. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I find a lot of inspiration from all of those people. And then Pinterest. I just love Pinterest. I tend to pin all of my ideas on there. I don't spend that much time actually on Pinterest in terms of just like scrolling. But if I want to like have a little look so I'll talk through this a little bit with some of my ideas later on if there's a particular thing I'm wanting to make I will type it into Pinterest have a little look get some inspiration um, and as I say that's where I sort of collate my ideas so I will leave the link to my Pinterest below just in case you guys are interested because I have a big sewing board I think it's got like 800 pins on it now <laughs> for sewing inspiration but I've also started doing like a dress board and I've started doing like a winter dress board because I noticed that actually it's quite helpful to be able to like go straight away to winter dresses when I'm wanting to make something like that rather than sifting through the hundreds of summer dresses that I have pinned um, but yeah that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from um, so as I say that's what we'll kind of be going through some of that today um, and then also of course I get really really inspired by um, you know brands like pattern brands like Tilly and the Buttons I absolutely love they're one of my absolute favorites but there's lots of other small pattern indie pattern designers coming out Friday Pattern Company people like that who have the most gorgeous patterns and that often inspires me and going on the hashtags of certain patterns and seeing what people have make uh, have made is definitely a big inspiration for me um, so yeah I think we should just get started I have got uh how many have i got five different pieces of fabric to show you which are all from stash all bought earlier this year from charity shops and bits and bobs that i've pulled out these are things that i'm wanting to work with this year i'm not buying i don't think i am i mean i might do if i see something but i'm not planning to buy any fabric specifically for summer and for summer making i'm just planning to use what i've already got 
try and use patterns that I've already got as well. That's a big one for me. Um, so yeah, I think we should just dive in. So my big fabric pile, I'm just going to bring it round, I think, <laughs> so I can actually get to it. So let's start off with this beautiful sage linen so this is a linen viscose which is absolutely beautiful you may remember this if you watched my stitch festival vlog um which was back in march i attended the stitch festival in london i was invited by tilly and the buttons to take part in their catwalk show which was really good fun and i picked up this fabric this was a real spenny treat um, and I went to the Stitch Festival with that kind of idea in mind that I was going to treat myself to one or two pieces of very beautiful fabric. And linen was really high on my list because I've really got into very natural fibres. So I knit as well. You'll know this if you've followed me for a while. And I very much moved into the natural fibres with knitting. And now the same thing with sewing. Now I sew my own clothes. I like to be able to pick fabrics that are natural, breathable, and are going to biodegrade when I'm done with them and when they're sort of like full of holes and dead. <laughs> Um, so this is a linen viscose mix, which I'm a big fan of. I made a blouse last year out of a linen viscose mix and um, it was really lovely, breathable, lightweight, but also it didn't crease quite as much as a standard 100% linen. Um, so I thought that worked quite well. So I got it in this beautiful sage colour. I'm hoping you can see that colour on camera. Um, this was from Sister Mintaka. I can't really hold it up because it's so heavy. Um, I got four meters of it and it's a really wide width. I think it's something like 150 centimeter width, which means I've got a lot to work with and a lot to play with. But in my head, I had a very full dress in mind. So I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric for that. So I have been really inspired for years by Little Women Atelier which is a small independent brand run by a family. It's a family run business. Um, I think it is two sisters and then they've also got like their mom and somebody else involved now. Um, it's been going for a few years, but they create these really beautiful um, linen dresses, 100% linen in lots of different colors. And the beginning, I think they started with little women characters. So Meg, Amy, Jo um, and Beth, and they had different dresses in those styles in different colors and then they've sort of um kept bringing out more and more designs over the last few years um, and one of their most popular designs which i absolutely fell in love with is called the cottage core dress surprise surprise you guys know i love a bit of cottage core um living in the cotswolds and growing vegetables and running around in linen dresses is my vibe so <laughs> Um, I saw this cottage core dress and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I'll obviously pop up a picture on the screen for you. It's got a lovely V-neck. It's got this beautiful puff sleeve with a little cuff on it. Um, and then it's buttoned down all the front, goes in at the waist. I think there's a waist tie, buttoned down the front, um, sort of midi length, um, which is perfect. I wear a lot of midi length in the summer. That is my preferred length. Um, and I just absolutely love it. So um, yeah, I really want to recreate that in this lovely sage linen that I have here. Um, there's a few different patterns that I'm looking at that I think I could work with. First of all, there is the rosary apparel. Um, I think it is the flora dress. I probably should have checked that. Sorry, guys. I will put it up on the screen, the name and the picture of this dress. Um, this is a simple v-neck button up dress with a little puff sleeve. I think the puff sleeve has an elasticated band on it. So I do want to change that to add a cuff like it is in the Little Women Atelier dress. Um, and I also think as well, um, it's got a lovely waist tie, so I'd add a waist tie. I don't think the skirt is quite as full, so again, I'd be hacking that to make it, so I just literally simply cut the skirt pieces a bit wider and gather them in a bit more. And then I also love the fact that on the women, um, the Little Women Atelier, they have covered buttons. So if I've got enough scraps, which I think I should have, I'd like to make covered buttons for all the way down the front, which is something I've never done before. Um, but yeah, I think that would be just the perfect cottagecore dress in this lovely sage colour, uh, big straw hat, you know, running around the Cotswolds, some trainers on or some sandals on or something. I think that's just going to be lovely. So that is my first... Um, summer sewing inspiration-ness. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to another linen. So again, I picked this one up at the show at the Stitch Festival. If you saw that vlog, you might remember it. This one is 100% linen from Higgs and Higgs. Um, and you can tell because it's a lot, it's not quite as soft and it's a lot stiffer. It's got a lot more sort of like 
shape to it um, and it will probably crease quite a lot. I love red. When I was younger, it was my favourite colour. I used to wear it all the time when I was sort of like 16 to like 22. That was my colour that I would always go to. I'd always wear bright reds. And then I just kind of stopped wearing it. I'm not really sure why. I think it was partly because I became ill and... Um, my wardrobe changed quite a lot and yeah I've spoken about this before it took me a long time to find my confidence again with my clothes and when I started sewing that really helped me to like find myself again um and yeah I've just been feeling like actually you know what a red dress in my wardrobe is something that I could really do with I think that would be a really nice thing to add um so yeah I picked up this beautiful red linen which is a lovely like cherry red um, and again, I have been really, really inspired for years and years and years by um, the brand Sonderfloor. Long before I was sewing, I fell in love with their beautiful dresses. So they're made, again, from 100% linen. They're made in France. They're very sort of effortless French countryside chic, cottagecore style. And the brand itself went really big because the cottagecore aesthetic became really popular. Um, and... I think a lot of you guys will have seen them on Instagram. Um, yeah, I absolutely fell in love with them. But the dresses, um, you know, before I was sewing, before I got ill, they were so expensive. They're like 150 to 200 euros. Now I understand why they're made from beautiful natural fibers. They're made sustainably and ethically. You know, I don't have a problem with the price, but um, I couldn't really afford it. And so for years I lusted after these beautiful Sonder floor dresses. And now I sew, I'm like, you know what? I can just make my own Sonderfloor dress. Now, the classic style is this button up with a high collar, and I was very, very tempted to make something like that. But I have an awful lot of things in my wardrobe that are high necked. You can obviously see I'm wearing one today. I've made quite a lot of high necked dresses, and I really felt like actually I could do with a few things this summer that aren't quite so high up there. Um, I could do with, you know, some v-necks or, you know, I've got the um, Mabel dresses, which are like a sort of square neckline, um, which I really, really like. So I wanted to make a few things that were maybe not high necked. Um, so I had a little look on the Sonderfloor website and they have these beautiful um, wrap dresses, which obviously have a v-neck from being wrap dresses. Um, really, really lovely. So I found this one, which will pop up a picture now. Um, this is their beautiful red one. Um, and you can see the cuffs, you can like turn it up and you have white on it. But also there are pictures, I'll pop another picture. There's a green one where they've turned it down. So it's just one color. And I really like that. I'm not the biggest fan of the little turn up white um, on the red. I think it looks a little bit like a nurse's uniform um, from like the 1940s um so yeah i really like um just sort of the plain sleeve just a sim very simple short sleeve very simple wrap dress and i think that will be perfect for this beautiful red linen fabric it'll be one of those ones that you just like literally throw on grab a pair of espadrilles big straw hat and just rush out the house kind of thing you know it's a really easy quick dress um there's that scene in Casino Royale at the end where um, Vespa um, puts on that red wrap dress to go into Venice. And then obviously I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's not seen it, but it's all very sad. But um, she puts on that beautiful red wrap dress and it's so effortless. She just literally throws it on. I don't think she's actually wearing like any underwear or anything. And she just like throws it on and grabs some shoes and she's got this long dark hair. And I've always just been like, oh yes, dreams. Just like wake up in Venice and throw on your red wrap dress and walk out the door. Um, so <laughs> that's what I'm envisioning for my life um so we'll see if that actually happens um but yes that is my plan with this beautiful red linen and I think that's going to make a really really lovely dress okay so my next make is with this lovely bed sheet which I did talk about in a in a video um before last the one about saving money I sort of briefly spoke about this bed sheet which I picked up um from a charity shop for four pounds it is a single bed sheet with a matching pillow on one side you have this kind of seersucker stripe and on the other side it's a plain cotton with like 
a regular stripe um, and I just really loved it when I saw it. I just thought actually that would be really cool to mix and match those stripe patterns um, and I've seen a few people do that and the dress that immediately came to mind was the McCall's 7969. Um, I will pop up a little picture of I think her name is made by, is it made by Madeline? Um, who shared a top version that she'd made in a gingham where she'd mixed and matched the ginghams with the different sizes and it just looks so cool and I just really like that. I think it's a really interesting look and I would really like to have a go at doing that myself. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the McCall's 7969 but I want to try and make it as a maxi dress. I think the when I measured it up, um, if you include the front and the back, and the pillowcases. I've got like five meters of fabric here, so I've got quite a lot. So the plan is to make a tiered maxi dress. And so each piece of the bodice will be, so you'll have like the front and the uh, like the two pieces that cross over. One will be in one stripe and one will be in the other. And the same with the sleeve. One sleeve will be in one stripe and one sleeve will be in the other. And then the tiers will go alternate with the different stripe patterns. And I think that's going to look quite cool. And I think it's going to work quite well because this is quite a subtle fabric. It's not a really bold print. It's just a simple, you know, pink stripe. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to work really, really well. Um, I really want more maxi dresses in my life because I find them so nice to wear. You know, when I'm working from home and it's a lovely sunny day, walking the dog, things like that. Um, and, you know, I just want to be a little bit covered up because I don't want to burn. So the, you know, M7969 um, um, goes down below the elbow. It's like a three quarter length sleeve, which I really, really like. Um, so I think that'll work really, really well for that just to sort of keep me a bit covered up. But it's got that little V-neck, so I'm not got that high neck. Um, and it's also just really great, isn't it? Like you girls will know this if you're like me and you've got dark hair, those in between shaving your legs days, <laughs> you just really need some maxi dresses in your wardrobe. Like, I'm sorry if this is TMI, but when you have dark hair, like you can end up shaving your legs like basically every day in the summer or every other day is often the way for me. And my legs, like I get such bad shaving rash. So I like to have some days where I just leave my legs alone and try not to shave them too much over the summer. Um, so to have some dresses that cover my legs a little bit is like, yeah. And I know obviously it's a personal choice. You don't have to shave your legs. <laughs> it's just a disclaimer. But for me personally, that's what I prefer to do. I like to have shaven legs. So, you know, I just like to have a few maxi dresses in my wardrobe. <laughs> so that is the main reason for this beautiful maxi dress. And as I say, the fabric was thrifted and it was four pounds. I mean, what an absolute bargain. Um, I do need to give this a wash though, I think, before I start working with it. Um, and then I'm gonna need to unpick all the seams. I'm always like, <sighs> unsure whether I should pick the seams because it's quite a lot of work or whether I should just literally cut because you're saving like half a centimeter by picking the seams so I may just cut them we'll see um but yeah that's going to be a lovely maxi dress okay my next fabric you're going to think you're seeing the same fabric again it's a very similar color to that sage linen that I showed right at the beginning but this is actually a double gauze I bought this in a stash busting sale from my friend um helen who what is her instagram i think it's uh, from bonnie or something i will um put it on the screen because i can't remember um uh, yeah i can't remember the handle um but anyway this is three meters at 150 centimeter width of this beautiful double gauze fabric. It is so light and soft. It's from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. So it is a dead stock fabric originally. Um, and then I've obviously bought it in a stash bust. So yeah, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a kind of, it's not really thrifted, but you know what I mean? It's like not gone to waste kind of fabric, which makes me very happy. Um, again, I really want some super comfy, floaty dresses for the summer for when it gets a lot warmer I really want things that are going to be comfy to wear from home things that are sort of elasticated shirred easy to throw on don't even really need a bra if you can't be bothered with a bra situation you know just one of those like really lovely dresses and I've got um a couple of those in my wardrobe already I've got ready to wear one from Fat Face that I've had for about four years now and then I've got a Mabel that I made in a beautiful seersucker um cotton which again is another one that just gets thrown on all the time super comfy shirt so that's what i want to make 
Um, and I've got a few ideas for this. I have seen a few things on Pinterest. Um, so the first thing that I saw was this beautiful sage dress. I'll put it up now. So it's got this shirred bodice and then these big long sleeves. I love these sleeves. They remind me of like sort of like pirate wench sleeves. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've got like a big frill. They've got like a cuff and a big frill. And I just imagine they're going to be so pretty. They're really like cottage core look to them. Um, so that's definitely a possibility making like a shirred bodice because then that's definitely one that you could wear without a bra which would be super comfy um but i've also seen um i'm just checking to see the name of it um it's the isaka yeah Issaka dress, the Iskia dress or Iskia, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, um, I think from Doen, the brand, it's a very expensive dress, it's like £350, <laughs> I saw it on um, Mulberry House, the, um, the lady who um, runs that Instagram was wearing the dress and it's absolutely beautiful, and then I saw Charlotte Jacqueline wearing it as well, it's a beautiful dress but as I say it's very very expensive, um, I wouldn't be buying it if I wasn't a sewist, <laughs> um, but it is just really lovely, it's got these kind of of like channels in it I think that's what it is um that sort of gather the bodice together and it just looks very floaty and very comfortable um and I've seen a very similar pattern that's come out recently it's called the Eleonora dress by Silver Sage Patterns um and I absolutely love that it's so beautiful I've looked at it the hashtag on Instagram and I've seen people because I've got quite a big bust so I wanted to check people who've got the similar size bust to me because obviously it looks very different on somebody with a bigger bust um, and I just wanted to check that it still you know looked nice and still worked and it does and it looks really really good so I'm very very tempted to make that pattern with this lovely fabric however I have also been inspired for years by Janelle from Rosary Apparel. She makes quite a lot of dresses on her channel where she doesn't use a pattern at all. Um, and she just uses sharing and she just sort of like makes something up. And I've seen a few of her dresses and I've just thought, actually, I would love to have a go at making something like that. So I'm also tempted to just not use a pattern and to just have a go at making it up but that's obviously quite high risk especially with this lovely piece of fabric which i don't particularly want to ruin um it's not like a thrifted bed sheet that i can just play with um so i don't know i'm not sure yet what i'm gonna make with this but it is gonna be a floaty like probably like a mid axi as they call them so somewhere between a midi and a maxi like ankle grazing situation um you know like elasticated or drawstring or something so that it can just be worn um and not like sort of you know like it'll be really stretchy and comfy so that is definitely the plan with this lovely fabric okay we are on to our final fabric so this is a thrifted fabric which you may have seen in my video from a few weeks ago um this is a beautiful vintage print i think it's 60s or 70s um single bed sheet was it a single bed sheet or was it a flat sheet it may have been a flat sheet actually um but anyway there's a lot of fabric <laughs> Um, and I decided I wanted to have a go at making a nap dress from Hill House. Um, so Hill House is quite a famous brand if you don't know them. They're an American brand and they make these nap dresses which have become really really famous because they are just super comfy, super floaty, beautiful dresses. They tend to have like shirred bodices um, and like soft frilly sleeves and things. I'll pop up some pictures for you. Um, so that is the plan is to have a go at making my very own nap dress because I will not be spending hundreds of dollars on one <laughs> when I can make one myself from a bed sheet. Um, so Lauren Johnson shared a tutorial on her Instagram, on her Instagram, on her YouTube, um, making a sort of nap dress style. Um, and I really, really like what she made. So I'm going to have a go at making the same. It's a shirred bodice all the way down. And then it's got these big like frilly straps. So they look almost like a cap sleeve, but they are actually just a strap. And what she's done is she's, I think, shirred along the top of them so that you then get this frill that sticks out and it looks so much like the nap dresses on the website um and i just love it i think it's such a beautiful dress um so yeah that's what i'm going to do with this one i'm going to make a nap dress style um and i think it's going to be lovely it is a little bit see-through this fabric so um i think gathering it all shearing it and having it a really gathered will hopefully add 
the um, opaqueness that I'm going to need to actually wear it. But if not, I will have to just get like a slip or something to wear underneath it. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Or it will just become a like at home dress or something. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to sew with this beautiful vintage bed sheet. Okay, so that is everything. That is all of my summer sewing inspiration that I have to share with you guys. There is going to be a few other makes, but they are for a very specific event that I'm very excited to share about soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going as press to an event and yeah, there's going to be a lot of making for this special event so um i will be sharing that soon so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that because it's a really exciting series coming out if you enjoyed watching my video you could check out my Substack, which i also share lots to do with living a handmade homegrown and slow life and also my instagram as well where i sort of share like in real time um my making journey and what i'm up to um, my current whips and all that kind of stuff Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. I have a very exciting video coming out next week. It is going to be a vlog of a brand new pattern being released. I can't really say much more unfortunately but I am making a dress from curtains um, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one and I will see you next time. Thanks guys, bye!